The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 10th chapter. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. He who is a hired hand and not a shepherd, who does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. He flees because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me. Just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. And I have other sheep that are not of this fold. I must bring them also. And they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason the Father loves me, because I lay down my life, and I take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down, and I have authority to take it up again. This charge I have received from my Father. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations in our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. When Jesus uses word pictures like parables, metaphors, or other figures of speech, he often represents God as someone who is eccentric. In the parable of the sower, the sower scatters the seed everywhere, not just on the good soil. In the parable of the unforgiving servant, the king forgives a debt of 10,000 talents, which is just an unimaginable amount of money. In the parable of the vineyard, the owner pays everyone the same wage, regardless of how long they worked. In the parable of the wicked tenants, the landowner sent his own son to collect the rent from the tenants, who had already killed his servants. These are just a few of the eccentric characters who represent God in Jesus' parables. Well, today we heard Jesus describe himself as the good shepherd. We're so used to hearing about Jesus as the good shepherd that we don't truly examine what good shepherd Jesus said about himself or about us. When we listen more closely, we discover that good shepherd Jesus is a very eccentric shepherd. Now, Greek has more than one word that translates as good in English. One word is agathos. It means competent, professional, skilled, and so on. The other word is kalos. This word means noble, heroic, excellent, and so on. When Jesus refers to himself as the good shepherd, he means that he is the excellent, noble, and heroic shepherd. He's not merely competent, professional, and skilled. This kind of shepherd would seem very eccentric to the average shepherd in first century Israel. Shepherds in first century Israel weren't raising flocks full of beloved pets. They exploited the sheep. They used the sheep primarily for wool, mutton, and sacrifices. The reason they watched over the sheep wasn't because they loved the sheep, but because sheep were the source of their income. They had families that needed food, clothing, and shelter. The sheep were the sources of those things. When a predator began stalking the flock, the shepherd was, wasn't really concerned for the sheep directly. He was concerned because the predator was taking food off his children's table and clothing off their back. That predator was affecting his income, which was affecting his family's standard of living. When a shepherd was good or competent, his sheep were healthy, so they would produce plenty of wool, or so they gained plenty of weight when it was time to sell them to the butcher. Shepherds have always defended their flocks from predators, but they don't do it because they love the sheep. They kill or drive off the predators because they want to provide for their families. A shepherd might get killed by a predator, but it's an accident, and he doesn't go down without a fight. 
And he most certainly does not willingly lay down his life for the sheep. Well, we recently heard Jesus describe himself as the good shepherd. That's the noble, the heroic shepherd. He said, I am the good, the kalos shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. Jesus described himself as the shepherd who loves his sheep by willingly surrendering his life for them. This sets good shepherd Jesus apart from all other shepherds. Indeed, we can place all religions into one of two categories. All the false religions teach, self, teach self-salvation. You must do something in order to provide for all or part of your own salvation. There are a wide variety of activities in these religions. Meditations, quests, self-punishment, fasting, right thinking, right talking, self-improvement, moral character, and on and on and on. But it all boils down to the saving yourself. The true religion, Christianity, is the only religion where God takes on human flesh and then declares that he will suffer and surrender his life in order to save his creation. Furthermore, the shepherd who is merely a competent shepherd cares for his sheep because of what he can get from the sheep, food and clothing. But good shepherd Jesus doesn't need anything from his sheep. He defends the sheep with his life simply because he loves his sheep. It's good that good shepherd Jesus loves his sheep and surrenders his life for them. For we are the sheep that he speaks of in this figure of speech. And we have powerful enemies. We just heard good shepherd Jesus speak of the wolf. I don't care how much the sheep spends in the weight room or at the martial arts dojo, he's not going to be able to take on the wolf. If a sheep has to defend himself, the wolf will have an easy lunch. The wolves that come after us are sin, death, and the devil. Sin, death, and the devil are allies. Death is the result of our sin. As Paul wrote, for the wages of sin is death. That's one of the many sad facts about death. It's our sin that opened the door and led death into this world. Every time we make ourselves more important than God, any time our feelings are more important than God's word, any time we exploit our neighbor instead of loving him, any time we refuse to forgive, any time we listen to gossip, any time we murder with thoughts of hate, any time we want our ways instead of God's way, any time we rationalize sin, these are all ways that we open the door to the world and allow death and the devil to rule. It's as the Apostle Paul told the church in Rome, Therefore, just as sin came into the world through one man and death through sin, and so death spread to all men, because all sinned. Death is one thing that we all have in common. Everyone dies. Good shepherd Jesus said, He who is the hired hand and not a shepherd, who does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees, And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. He flees because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. With these words, he illustrates the value of false religions. As far as the false religions are concerned, when death comes, you're on your own. If the religion has an afterlife, then it teaches that you're judged by your own merit or worthiness. Who you are and what you've done. If you failed in this life, well then, too bad, so sad. Some false religions are so deceptive that they try to teach that the wolf is our friend. Our current culture wants us to believe that the wolf of death is our friend and prevents, presents elective abortion, 
euthanasia and assisted suicide as valid solutions to the problems of life. Well, good shepherd Jesus, on the other hand, fought with sin, death and the devil, and he did it in the most unusual way. First of all, the heroic good shepherd Jesus became one of the sheep. That's what Christmas is all about. The Son of God took on human flesh. Good shepherd Jesus in a manger, wrapped in swaddling clothes. Who ever heard of a shepherd becoming one of the sheep in order to save the sheep? Nevertheless, good shepherd Jesus became one of us in order to battle sin, death, and the devil. When the time came for good shepherd Jesus to battle death, he gave death the home field advantage. He suffered and he died on the cross. And as he hung on the cross, good shepherd Jesus endured the eternal punishment that our sins deserved. Instead of leaving us to face the wolf of death by ourselves, he faced death for us. He faced the death of this world and the eternal death of hell. Good Shepherd Jesus faced all of this so that we can be sheep in his eternal flock. Good Shepherd Jesus proclaimed that he will lay down his life for the sheep. And in the gospel that we just heard, he said many more th things. As we work through the gospel, he, we hear him say even more. He said, I lay down my life and I take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down, and I have authority to take it up again. You see, with these words, Good Shepherd Jesus promised not only to lay down his life for the sheep, but he promised also to take it up again. Alex, in a little while, you're going to be confirmed. And your confirmation verse, you know, it's, I don't know if you know the story about this, but Alex was supposed to be confirmed last week, and of course, other things took place. But uh, it's ironic that you're going to be confirmed on Good Shepherd Sunday, because your verse is actually after our gospel lesson. So as we've heard Jesus talk about all these things about how he is the Good Shepherd, how he lays down his life for the sheep, these are words I want you to always remember. And he speaks this directly to you, Alex. He says, my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they will never perish, and no one will snatch them out of my hand. That is our good shepherd Jesus. Our good shepherd Jesus, that Kalos shepherd, the heroic, the noble shepherd, willingly went to the cross, not only for you, but for all of us. And because of that, we are part of his pasture. We have that place in heaven that's been prepared for us. Amen. And may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus to life everlasting. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, our Lord Jesus Christ said to the apostles, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Alex, you've been baptized and catechized in the Christian faith, according to the Lord's bidding. Jesus said, whoever confesses me before men, I will also confess before my Father who is in heaven. But whoever denies me before men, I will also deny before my Father who is in heaven. Lift up your heart, therefore, to the God of all grace, and joyfully give answer to what I now ask you in the name of the Lord. Alex, do you this day in the presence of God and of this congregation acknowledge the gifts that God gave you in your baptism? Yes, I do. Do you renounce the devil? Yes, I renounce him. Do you renounce all his works? Yes, I renounce them. Do you renounce all his ways? Yes, I renounce them. Do you believe in God the Father Almighty? Yes, I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord? Yes, I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. 
he descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? Yes, I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Do you hold all the prophetic and apostolic scriptures to be the inspired word of God? I do. Do you confess the doctrine of the Evangelical Lutheran Church, drawn from the scriptures, as you have learned to know it from the small catechism, to be faithful and true? I do. Do you intend to hear the word of God and receive the Lord's Supper faithfully? I do, by the grace of God. Do you intend to live according to the word of God and in faith, word and deed, to remain true to God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, even to death? I do, by the grace of God. Do you intend to continue steadfast in this confession and church and suffer all, even death, rather than fall away from it? I do, by the grace of God. We rejoice with thankful hearts that you have been baptized and have received the teaching of the Lord. You have confessed the faith and have been absolved of your sins. As you continue to hear the Lord's word and receive his blessed sacrament, he who has begun a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. Amen. Please kneel. Alexander James Koslowski. The Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you the new birth of water and the Spirit and has forgiven you all your sins, strengthen you with his grace, the life everlasting. Amen. And Alex, as I read before, your confirmation verse is from John chapter 10, verses 27 to 28, where Jesus says, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they will never perish, and no one will snatch them out of my hand. Let us pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you for your great goodness and bringing this, your Son, to the knowledge of your Son and Savior, Jesus Christ, and enable him with the hearts to believe and with the mouth to confess his saving name. Grant that, bringing forth the fruits of faith, he may continue steadfast and victorious to the day when all who have fought the good fight of faith shall receive the crown of righteousness, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Almighty and most merciful Father, in the waters of holy baptism, you have united your children in the suffering and death of your Son, Jesus Christ, cleansing them by his blood. Renew in them the gift of your Holy Spirit, that they may live in daily contrition and repentance with a faith that ever clings to their Savior. Deliver them from the power of Satan and preserve them from false and dangerous doctrines that they may remain faithful in hearing Christ's word and receiving his body and blood. By the Lord's Supper, strengthen them to believe that no one can make satisfaction for sin but Christ alone. Enable them to find joy and comfort only in him, learning from this sacrament to love you and their neighbor and to bear their cross with patience and joy until the day of the resurrection of their bodies, to life immortal. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And peace be with you. Amen.